Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be using Photoshop for our edits and we're going to be taking a black and white photo and we're going to be trying to colorize that photo just by using Photoshop. Um, so I went ahead and I filmed this video already and it all went wrong but I still have the edits that we did before so I'm just going to show you this is what it kind of looks like afterwards um, after applying all of these methods that I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, obviously that looks kind of different to the original but we're kind of getting there to what we should be getting uh, from these edits. So I've just gone ahead and I've taken this photo of Taylor Swift, I've just turned it black and white and what I'm going to be doing, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the colours from the actual original photo and I'm going to be using those to kind of make sure I have a more accurate colour scheme going on. Now this is a quite a complicated photo to try and colour to kind of add color to. So I'm just gonna do it really simply, really quickly. Um, the selections aren't gonna be the best. I'm just gonna try and show you the techniques that you can use, that you can go ahead and do this yourself. Um, obviously this photo isn't gonna be perfectly done because I can spend a lot more time on this. If you're doing this for clients, I recommend you spend a few hours on a photo. I'm gonna be spending tops 20 minutes on this photo. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the computer and show you how to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in a group here and I'm just going to work on the layers. Now the first technique we're going to use is we're going to create a new layer, get the brush tool and we're going to try and paint in specific colours. So I'm going to start with the C and all I'm going to do is I'm going to, in this case I'm just going to be using the colours below like I mentioned. So I'm going to press optional alt on my keyboard to get up the colour picker. Alternatively if you're doing this and your image is already black and white, say for example it's literally just this, you come down here to the colour palettes, double click and you can choose any colour you want. Uh, once you've selected that colour just click on OK, get the brush tool and all we're going to do is we're going to paint in the colours down here, down below. So. I'm going to rush through this and I'm just going to show you the after once I'm done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've just painted those colours in quickly. Now, all you're going to do is you come onto the blending modes and you can choose one of three. You can choose overlay, soft light or colour. I'm going to be going for colour in this case because this is such a soft colour. Overlay and soft light are very similar, just the overlay is slightly more contrasty than soft light, but both of them don't really let much colour through. So we're really going to be going for colour in this case. Um, so that's that one done. Next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on the skin. Now I previously used a different method for the skin. I'm going to show you that method now but it's not going to be the best method because obviously it's quite hard to get skin tone color correct and one thing I recommend you do is if you don't have the actual color is you import a photo with somebody else's skin and you copy that color using the color picker and you use that color and you use the painting tool just because it seems to make it slightly easier to get the correct colors. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new layer, I'm going to show you a different method. So you go in, you create a color balance. All you're going to do is you're going to uh, drag these sliders and you're going to choose a specific color. So say for example I increase the red, you can add more magenta, maybe some more yellow. So add some more reds in the shadows, maybe some more magenta, probably a bit more yellow in there I think. It's probably going to help it out. Um, come onto the highlights uh, and you can sort of, you can see how this works. All you do is slowly go, slowly go around tweaking the colors until you get the colour that you want. So let's say that was the skin colour we're going for. It's not, but let's say it was just for saving time. Um, all you then do is click on your mask layer, press Command I if you're on Mac or Control I if you're on uh, Windows, and all you're going to do is paint with the brush tool, make sure white is your foreground layer, increase your brush size, and you're just going to paint back in that skin tone. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do this, I'm going to try and adjust the colours, uh, and I'm just going to show you where we get up to. Okay, so I've just left it there. I can't be able to spend too much time trying to change the skin color to try and get it correct. Like I said before, what I recommend you do is you actually use the brush tool to paint in that specific color. But I don't really have time to do that right now. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to show you the different methods. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the glasses. Now, using the glasses, what I recommend here is we don't actually just paint the color straight in because it's quite a small, fiddly little uh, shape. We're going to actually come in and we're gonna use the selection tool. So select the, uh, layer one below, come onto the selection tool here um, and we're going to come onto the glasses and we're just going to paint around the rims of the glasses and we're going to get the selection tool, we're going to draw around the rims of the glasses um, until we get a fairly good selection. Again I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Paint like this around the edge, again on this side. Press optional alt on your keyboard and you can remove that selection there. Okay, so let's say once we've got that already, um, once we've got that selection, all you need to do then is create a new layer. So come down here, new layer, put it at the top, and then press Shift Delete on your keyboard, come down to Color, 
and you can select a specific color. So let's say we want her glasses to be, I don't know, pink like that, for example. Then select OK, OK again, and it overlays that color to pink. Um, I just realized what I've done here is I have created a selection and I've included the black of the glasses. Um, this may not make a difference because we might just stop the black from bleeding, the color bleeding through onto the black, but I recommend just selecting the area that you're going to colorize. So come down to here and we're going to select color and you can see what it's done is it's overlaid that color again. Now obviously because I left in the selection of the black, it's then colorized the black as well. So don't do that when you do the selection, make sure you select the actual area. Now one thing you can do is create a mask, press brush on your keyboard and literally just paint to get rid of that selection there. So let's say if I don't want the blacks, um, you just paint like that and it'll get rid of the blacks. So I've done that really quickly, but there you go. That's what it looks like when you get rid of the blacks and that's what the color selection looks like. I'm gonna just put in the color I used last time, which is her actual sunglasses color. Um, it's slightly sort of more pastel -y pink. Okay, so there we have it. That is the sunglasses. Next thing we're gonna work on is the hair. Now again, for the hair you can use um, either the um, color balance layer or the brush layer, but I'm gonna show you another method and that is using curves. Um, so all you do, come down here and you select the curves layer and then all you're going to do is you're going to move this RGB around until you get a color that you like again. Now the issue with the curves layer and the color balance layer is it takes a lot longer to adjust the colors until you get the correct one. The only good thing about them means that if you then decide you don't like the color you can go back in and really easily just tweak the colors. So if I just double click on here for example I can go back in and I can just adjust the skin tone. Um, so come back here onto the curves layer we're going to select red and we're trying to go for that sort of blonde color there. So for argument's sake, let's say that's the color we're going to go for. It's not. Again, I'm just going to put in the color that actually works. But just to show you what you do, you've got the color, you click on the selection mask, press Command I, it inverts that layer, press your brush tool again like we did before, X to put white as your foreground color uh, and then you just paint back in where you want the hair. So let's say I want the hair to be like that. Uh, I'm just doing this really quickly so I'm getting a lot of bleeding of color onto the other layers. Um, now one thing that can be an issue is obviously this wispy hair here. Um, the way I usually tend to fix that is I come in, I then press B on my keyboard, I change the color to black, so black is the foreground color, and all that's going to do is it's going to then paint to remove, but I'm going to increase the brush size, make sure my hardness is on zero, um, I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to click sort of to the side of it and I'm going to let the feather of that brush remove some of that color. So when I zoom in again, there is still color there, but it's a lot fainter, basically it's just reducing the opacity of that specific color. Um, for those of you who don't know how to use um, mask layers, uh, brief explanation here, if you change your foreground color, all it will do is it will either paint in or paint out that specific color. So as you see here, black is our, foreground, is our color of the mask. If I put white, it's going to paint in that color. If I put black, I can remove that color. So if I've got any bleeding of color, I can just go in and really easily paint out some of those colors there if I don't want them there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've used a different color. I went ahead and I used the brush tool to paint in the hair color. Um, so the next thing and final thing really is working on the lips. Now for the lips, again, I think the best tool to use here is the brush tool. So we're going to select brush, we're going to come down here and we're going to select a sort of pinky red color that we're going to use for the lips, something like that. Click OK and we're going to go in and very simply just paint where the lips should be. So again, like I said at the beginning, I'm doing this really quickly just to show you the method that you would use. Paint in the lips like that. Let's say that selection is perfect. You zoom out, and then again, you just do the same thing as before either overlay, soft light, or in this case, color seems to work the best. Color, and there you go, that's the lip color done. Now, obviously, her lips are very bright here, but you can see she has lipstick on in this photo, so I've just gone ahead and I've made a very bright lip color. 
Okay, so the final thing I think really is to work on the background. Now for the background, what I tend to do is just do one block color and then from there I can go in and add separate colors. So for example, here we're looking at a mostly sort of yellowy red for the background um, with some red here, some greens here and some blues up here. So first thing to do is literally just create one block color. We're gonna paint that in and then if you want to, you can go in and add more detail if you want in the end. Again, I'm just showing you the techniques that you would use. So we turn back on the layer that we're working on, create a new layer. I'm going to um, select, I don't know, this color here, I think, probably somewhere around there. Select that color. I'm going to turn on the black and white layer again. And all I'm gonna do is press the brush tool and I'm gonna paint in that color all over the buildings in the background. It doesn't have to be too exact uh, because it's in the background, it's not a detailed area. Um, and when we put it on here, we come down to color on the blending modes, you can see it's very faint what it does. So it doesn't matter too much where the selection is, as long as it's not overlapping too much onto the other colors, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. So there we go, there we have it, that is the background done. And you can see how quickly that was, how quickly I can just add some color into the background. It really does help the image pop a little bit more. Then, like I said at the beginning, if you want to, you can come in, you can select your greens if you want. If you want to put greens in for the trees, you can come in, paint in that green area here, here, maybe some here. I'm just rushing this really quickly. Uh, and then again, come onto your blending mode, select color, and you have some greens in there as well. Uh, obviously, in this case, we have a very vibrant green. So one thing it would be good to do is press Shift Command U on your key. Is press Command U or Control U on your keyboard, which brings up this layer, hue saturation, and you can just drop the saturation of that color. And there you have it. There is some green in that image, but it's not too obvious. Right, we're basically done now. Final thing to do is work on the boat and also the shirt. However, in this photo, the shirt is just white, so we're going to leave that. And for the boat, we're just going to go for a nice cream color. So we can turn this off. Option Alt again. And we're just going to use the brush tool. So again, if this was you, double click on the palette, choose a color that you want, maybe somewhere around there, click OK. And then we're just going to paint in, again, the area that we want to do. One thing I recommend doing is painting with the color uh, actually turned on, with the blending mode turned on. It just kind of means you can kind of see what you're doing a little bit better. So like this, really quick selection. Um, I recommend spending more time. One thing you could do is you could actually use the selection tool like I mentioned earlier that we use for the sunglasses to actually select the background here and then just paint in the background colour. Okay, so there we have it. We're basically done now. Um, obviously that colour I think is a little bit too saturated so like I said before, press um, Command U or Control U brings up this hue saturation layer. Drop the saturation if you want. I'm going to go for somewhere quite low. I want it to almost be white but not completely white. Just have some colour in there. So around minus 70 is a good bet. And there we have it, we're basically done with the color grade. Um, so there's not much more we can do with this now. Um, obviously here, um, we can work on adding some color into her ring. We can also put some color into her shirt. What might look good is if we add a very pale blue to the shirt. So we can use a very similar color to this um, and just paint it in for the shirt. And I'm gonna use the selection tool here just because I know it's gonna be a lot quicker if I use the selection tool. So increasing the size with close square brackets, I'm gonna paint on the shirt. I'm gonna come up to the top layer, press Shift Delete, color, and I'm just gonna select this color here. Click OK, OK again, and you can see if I press Command D, it deselects, and it's put in that color. You see how quickly you can do that if you use the selection tool. However, selection tool will only really work if there's lots of contrast between different areas. Because this shirt is completely white, that worked quite well. So we're gonna come here, click on Soft Light, and it's gonna add some color to the shirt, not too much. Actually, overlay or color might work better. We'll see what happens if we do color. Okay, so you can do color, and again, it's added some color to the shirt. In this case, there's too much color, so like I said before, Command U or Control U, drop the saturation, and all we're doing is added in a little bit of color there, so it's not completely white. And there we go, we have it, we have the edit done. So if I show you what the image looks like, actual supposed to be colored, and what it looks like now, it's much better. However, if I show you what it looked like before in um, black and white, and I turn this off here, that's black and white, and this is what happens when we add in the color. So you can see how effective this is at actually color grading your image. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, I hope it was useful. Um, 
I hope it went into a lot of detail. I can spend more time on this in the future video if you want, but already this video is 20 minutes long, so I hope it was useful. Uh, take these techniques, any photos that you do, just put them on Instagram and tag us just to let us know. It would be great to see what sort of stuff you guys do. We'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.